Good afternoon. I would like to start by acknowledging the organizers for the invitation and congratulations for setting up such an impressive program. Since 2015, my group Aging and Unemployed at I3S in Porto has been studying chromosomal instability in the context of aging. Today's seminar is entitled Inhibition of Age-Associated Chromosomal Instability, an Emergent Strategy to Delay Cellular Senescence and Aging. Aging represents a major risk factor for many chronic diseases, including cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, cancer, arthritis, and frailty. Aging occurs at the molecular, cellular, and organismal level, and a host of age-associated features has been identified with a subset being potential drivers of the aging process, the so-called aging hallmarks. At the molecular level, the aging hallmarks comprise DNA damage, telomere attrition, epigenetic alterations, and protein aggregation. At the cellular level, aging features include accumulation of aberrant mitochondrion lysosomes, deregulated nutrient sensing, and cellular senescence. Senescent cells are cells that stop dividing in response to stress uh, or damage from exogenous or endogenous sources. And these cells, they exhibit distinct biomarkers. Uh, and the secretory phenotype causing local chronic inflammation with an impact in healthy surrounding cells, as you can see here. So the senescent cells are represented in pink and they accumulate during aging, having a paracrine signaling in the neighbor cells. At the organismal level, the chronic low-grade inflammation associated also with cell senescence leads to stem cell exhaustion and to alter intercellular uh, communication. In the lab, we have been focused in chromatin aging and how this leads to uh, cell senescence. Our rationale is that increased chromosomal instability and consequently DNA damage um, leads to a progressive loss of chromatin architecture and epigenetic remodeling, which in turn compromise the cell type specific gene expression that determines cell identity and function. Although an intervention is still missing to correct chromosomal instability and DNA damage or improve the DNA repair mechanisms, and there are other mainstream strategies that are available that either improve the epigenome or target the senescent cells. So aging once considered irreversible, is now seen as remarkable malleable. Diet regimens such as caloric restriction and fasting, even more if coupled to circadian cycles, they are able to preserve the epigenome. More dramatically, cellular reprogramming by the Amanaka factors acts by resecting the epigenome and has been validated in animal models. But such a pluripotency triggering prevents its clinical translation thus far. So an intervention later on, based on the ablation or clearance of dysfunctional senescent cells has been increasingly popular. Senescent cells, they are responsible for the age-associated pathologies due to their secretory phenotype known as the SASP. Many drugs targeting senescence or the SASP, they are under clinical trials. One thing that called our attention as we reviewed in this paper was the fact that 
the reprogramming and the senolytic therapies, they all end up by improving the cell proliferative fitness. So we ask whether by somehow modulating the age-associated refractory features to proliferation could actually work to either reprogram epigenetics or delay senescence. To this end, we start by analyzing the cell cycle dynamics of age cells. We use human dermal fibroblasts retrieved from Caucasian males with age ranging from neonatal to octogenarian. And these are movies of early cell culture passages recorded under face contrast microscopy for several days. When comparing a neonatal with a middle age uh, sample, you can easily appreciate that the striking difference is the loss of proliferative capacity during aging, even though it is widely accepted that this loss of proliferative capacity acts to prevent damaged cells from proliferating, the exact regulatory mechanisms have been remain, have remained elusive. Also, we realize that analysis of the mitotic process in aging models and diseases was scarce, and the comprehensive analysis of cell division efficiency in naturally aged cells was largely missing. To address these questions, we establish a human cellular model of natural aging consisting of human dermal fibroblasts retrieved from skin biopsies of healthy Caucasian males with age, ages ranging from neonatal to octogenarian. Since inter-individual difference exists in the rate at which a person ages, the so-called biological age, we included two donors of each age in a total of five chronological ages to increase the robustness of any correlation found with aging. In addition, we use dermal fibroblasts from an 80 years old child with the hutchinson gilford progeria syndrome as a model of premature cellular aging. Considering that during a normal postnatal lifespan, cells in vivo will hardly reach the exhaustion number of replications of certain culture. And to limit any artifacts and clonal selection of in vitro culturing, only early cell culture passages way below replicative lifespan exhaustion were used. To validate the suitability of our cellular models as models of normative and premature aging, respectively, we measure the percentage of cells exhibiting senesa markers. Chronic accumulation of macromolecular damage during natural aging induces a cellular stress response known as senescence and accumulation of senescent cells has been widely reported for chronological aging and age-related disorders. Senescent cells exhibit distinct biomarkers such as increased beta-galactosidase activity due to the high accumulation of lysosomal mass, heterochromatin foci, uh, DNA damage markers, and also an increased expression of cell cycle inhibitors. In addition, these cells, they exhibit a secretory phenotype causing local inflammation in surrounding cells. Accordingly, we found that there are significantly higher levels of senescence associated biomarkers measuring under strict quantitative parameters by microscopy analysis and in the proliferating fibroblast cultures from older individuals and HEPS patients 
thus validating the suitability as models of normative and premature aging. So you see here that not only there is an increased percentage of cells staining positive for DSA beta gal assay, as well as cells become increasingly positive for the double immunostaining for a DNA damage marker, 53BP1, and the cell cycle inhibitor, P21. And also the cell size, which is also a typical feature of the senescent cells, tends to increase in the elderly samples and HEPS. To investigate the cell cycle behavior of fibroblasts from the different age individuals, we perform long-term face contrast live cell imaging. Interestingly, we found that not only the number of dividing cells uh, decreases with advancing age, but also the interval between nuclear envelope breakdown and anaphase onset, which we consider the measure for mitotic duration, and this also increased steadily with advancing age. And the quantification you can see here. So there is a gradual increase of mitotic duration from nuclear envelope breakdown to anaphase onset with advancing age. To investigate the chromosome or the spindle defects that are contributing to the increased mitotic duration in the older mitotic cells, we performed high resolution spinning disconfocal microscopy in cells that were transduced with lentivirus for the expression of a bisistron H2B GFP to label the DNA and the chromosomes. And M cherry tubulin to follow the microtubules and the spindle. We found an increase in several mitotic phenotypes, uh, significant, significantly at the middle age and old age samples. And these include a delay in chromosome alignment at the metaphase plate, as well as chromosome misegregation, as you can see here with an event of an anaphase lagging chromosome, a chromosome that is left behind in uh, the cell division, which later on will generate a micronucleus. We also found that because of these mitotic defects, there is an increase in an aneuploidy from middle age on. Um, and we measure this by performing uh, fluorescence in situ hybridization for uh, using uh, central, centromeric probes against three chromosome pairs. And you see that the anosomy index of these three chromosomes increases from middle age on, but also uh, it's, it's even more striking if you look at uh, an euploidy in post-mitotic cells, uh, cells that we arrest in telophase um, using the cytocalosine D inhibitor uh, for cytokinesis. So an euploidy uh, increases during normative aging due to an age-associated loss of mitotic fidelity. To identify the molecular mechanisms behind this complex aging associated mitotic phenotype, we perform RNA sequencing, gene expression profiling of cells capturing mitosis, accordingly to the experimental layout shown here. So basically fibroblast cultures from neonatal and octogenarian donors, they were treated with a mitotic block drug, uh, the STLC, to enrich uh, for mitotic index, and the mitotic cells were collected by mechanical detachment. Since cell synchronization uh, it was limited in elderly versus the neonatal cultures, we use, of course, a higher number of cell culture flasks with octogenarian fibroblasts to collect equivalent number of, cell, of mitotic uh, cells. 
uh, in both elderly and neonatal uh, cultures. Uh, we confirmed that this procedure yielded um, um, an enrichment uh, of around 95% of mitotic cells. So this is a, a, a very pure mitotic uh, population, which was uh, the population that we used for the RNA sequencing uh, analysis. This was important because using this methodology, we uncouple any changes that we found that uh, we could find in mitotic gene expression from the sample differences in mitotic index and overall proliferation capacity. The RNA-seq revealed that uh, the abundance of uh, 3300 uh, 3, uh, gene transcripts was significantly altered in octogenarian mitotic fibroblasts compared to neonatal mitotic fibroblasts. And in agreement with elderly cell defects in mitosis, the top 10 most altered gene ontology terms included uh, six cell cycle and uh, mitosis related gene ontologies. And very interestingly, the 71 mitosis gene ontology genes uh, uh, that were significantly altered uh, in uh, the elderly uh, samples, uh, they were mostly down-regulated. So this means that the elderly mitotic cells, they are entering mitosis with a very low level of mitotic transcripts. Interestingly, these genes uh, are targets of the BMIP FOXM1 transcription complex, which drives the expression of G2M cell cycle genes containing the homology region CHR motif in their promoters. Therefore, we ask whether the loss of mitotic proficiency during normative aging was due to FOXM1 down regulation. Indeed, there is a, a decrease in the levels of both FOXM1 transcripts and protein levels in uh, with advancing age, as you can see in this graph. So this is in agreement with the gradual uh, reduction that we saw uh, in, um, in mitotic. So this is in agreement with the increased duration of mitotic duration uh, with advancing age. So we concluded that an aging associated FOXM1 repression accounts for an extensive transcriptional uh, downregulation of mitotic genes and the phenotypes that we observed in the early senescent dividing cells. Moreover, moreover uh, a comprehensive list uh, of 55 genes that were identified as comprising the senescent core signature was interrogated in the RNA-seq dataset. Uh, although the transcriptome of senescent cells is highly heterogeneous uh, and depends on the cell type and the senescent stimulus, uh, there are 55 genes that were identified as altered in different types of senescent cells um, in response to different stimuli. Uh, and some are down-regulated, uh, down whereas others are upregulated. Uh, interestingly, we found that 19 genes out of this signature, they were differentially regulated in the RNA-seq data set of mitotic octogenarian dermal fibroblasts, with 15 uh, of them behaving uh, as reported. Uh, thus, an unforeseen SAS phenotype evolves in elderly dividing cells alongside a global transcriptional shutdown of mitotic genes accounting therefore for the aging associated mild and euploidy levels. To test the correlation between FOXM1 repression and age associated phenotypes further, we depleted FOXM1 in fibroblasts from a 10 years old donor using RNA interference 
and again to uncouple gene expression analysis from the reduction in the mitotic index following the RNAi. We perform RNA-seq profiling of cells capturing mitosis accordingly to the experimental layout that I've shown before. And the RNA-seq revealed that the expression, that FOXM1 repression altered the abundance of 5,000 gene uh, transcripts, which were uh, again enriched for cell cycle and mitosis gene ontologies. The top 10 most altered geoterms um, included uh, mitosis, as I told you, and also the cell cycle genes uh, controlled by uh, this important uh, transcription factor, uh, FOXM1. Uh, moreover, uh, we found that 50% of the genes uh, that uh, were altered uh, in all age fibroblasts uh, they were also altered in the FOXM1 depleted cells. FOXM1 depleted young fibroblasts, they displayed again a mitotic delay and increased aneuploidy similar to old age fibroblasts. The percentage of cells with senescent markers, uh, they also increased. Uh, and again, we found that uh, there is an alter uh, expression of the SAS genes. Um, uh, and so the results show that the young cells with low levels of FOXM1, equivalent to those that we found in octogenarian cells, they recapitulate all the aging associated mitotic defects and neoploidy and senescent phenotypes. As FOXM1 depletion reduces uh, mitotic fidelity, we hypothesize that FOXM1 overexpression in the early cells should counteract the aging associated mitotic decline. So we did the expression of a constitutively active truncated form of FOXM1. Um, it is a truncated form, form because we need to remove this N-terminal domain, which uh, does uh, an auto-inhibitory loop in the transactivation domain. And uh, this N-terminal uh, inhibition, it's only removed if there is CDK activity, which we know is low in elderly cells. Um, and so using this truncated form, uh, we can generate uh, a form that is constitutively active and independent of CDK activity levels. And we transduce uh, cells uh, with lentivirus for the expression of this truncated form. And uh, we found that uh, the mitotic genes uh, that were uh, depleted uh, in the age cells and also by RNAi, they were being uh, recovered uh, upon the overexpression of this uh, active FOXM1. And we also found that the mitotic delay and the mitotic defects that we were seeing before in the octogenarian cells they were also rescued. So now cells, they uh, are doing mitosis much faster and under uh, fidelity. Because mitosis is more efficient, we also saw, of course, that there are decreased aneuploidy levels in these octogenarian cells under FOXM1 overexpression. Furthermore, the percentage of cells with the senescent biomarkers was also decreased uh, consistently with the amelioration of SASP and senescence core transcriptional signatures. So those senescence associated genes that were down, they come up, and those that were up, they go down. So overall, this data demonstrates that the modulation of mitotic efficiency through FOXM1 induction in held elderly cells prevents an and delays cell senescence. 
to directly demonstrate that chromosome segregation acts as an ultimate trigger to the establishment of a full senescent state, we perform the experimental layout shown here. Octogenarian fibroblasts expressing H2B GFP, they were followed under long-term time-lapse microscopy. Uh, we use a plate with coordinates so that at the end of, of the movie, we can fix the plate and uh, identify the cells uh, that are daughter cells from cells that dividing, divided during the first day. And so uh, basically we record the cells for three days. We end the imaging. We do the immunostaining uh, procedure for senescent markers. We acquire these cells, we see, we see which ones are senescent or not. And then using the coordinates of these cells, we can go back into the live cell imaging uh, analysis and see which mother cell gave the or generated the daughter cells that we are uh, um, examining. So uh, we found that using this technique, the daughter cell fate of mitotic cells uh, that do not have any chromosome segregation defects, they normally keep on cycling uh, with a low percentage of cells that arrest in the cell cycle during uh, the, the, the timeline of our uh, experiment. Uh, and only very few becoming uh, positive for senescent markers. However, uh, we noticed that cells from uh, mitosis with uh, mesegregation events, such as the one you can see here. So there are there is a daughter cell that has a micronuclei uh, that is generated due to an anaphase uh, lagging event. Uh, so following this cell and staining for the senescent markers at the end of the movie, you can appreciate that this cell has beta gal positive signaling, which are these uh, green dots uh, that you see in the cell. Uh, it also uh, has a positive signal for uh, the DNA damage marker 53BP1 and the P21 cell cycle inhibitor. So when quantifying all these cells that we saw mesegregation events, we noticed that in this case, uh, the situation is that all the daughter cells will arrest in the cell cycle and 85% of the cells, they actually become positive for the senescent markers. So in this way, we could show directly that cells that mesegregate chromosomes uh, they will uh, generate an uh, ultimate trigger to become permanently arrested in the cell cycle and uh, generate the senescent uh, phenotypes. So altogether, our data supports a model in which proliferating naturally aged cells with FOXM1 insufficiency and with a senescence-associated transcriptional priming, early senescence, uh, they lose mitotic fidelity that, if ending in chromosome segregation, ultimately triggers the accumulation of full senescent phenotypes uh, in the aneuploidy progeny. By reinstating FOXM1 transcriptional activity in the elderly cells, we could ameliorate the cell autonomous and also the cell non-autonomous feedback effects between mitotic fidelity and senescence, suggesting that this mechanism actually evolved as a positive feedback loop between cellular aging and unemployed. So if chromosome Misegregation accounts for full senescence. This means that chromosomal instability inhibition should significantly delay senescence. Chromosome segregation is often due to lagging chromosomes, as the one you see occurring right now in the movie of this H cell. 
and lagging chromosomes, they form uh, whenever overstable erroneous interactions between kinetochores and microtubules are left incorrected into anaphase. The stability of these kinetochore microtubule interactions has to be tightly regulated with, within levels that allow uh, enough stability for the formation of, um, of the attachment, but that also provide enough instability for any correction. So if the, uh, the microtubule interactions are very uh, hyperstable, you tend to have uh, chromosomal instability. If uh, these interactions are hypostable, uh, then you generate uh, a mitotic arrest. So the levels need to be here. And uh, this, uh, this stability of the interactions is safeguarded by microtubule destabilizing kinesines, the key to be an MCAC, um, and thus whenever the error correction machinery is compromised, improper kinetochore microtubule interactions will originate aneuploid order cells. So we ask if microtubule kinetochore interactions are somehow affected in old cells, and uh, indeed, uh, suggesting that that is the case, we found that uh, the MCAC levels, so the levels of this important kinesine searching protein that controls the stability of microtubule interactions, this kinesine is downregulated in the octogenarian cells as measured here by Western blot analysis and immunostaining um, analysis. And in line with this finding, we actually confirmed that there is an increased K fiber intensity um, in uh, the metaphase cells of elderly samples. And you can appreciate that in the graph. So the interactions are hyperstable. And can we correct uh, this defect? Uh, we tested, uh, we took advantage of an agonist that was available for this uh, depolymerizing uh, kinesine MCAC. Uh, it's an inhibitor known as uh, UMK57 uh, in elderly cells. So we treated cells with this compound, uh, which is known to uh, uh, improve the activity of MCAC and destabilize the kinetochore microtubule interactions. Uh, we uh, measure uh, the optimal uh, concentration of OMK to be used in the elderly cells by measuring the mitotic duration. And you can see here that at one micromolar concentration, uh, there is a, a rescue of the mitotic delay. And importantly, uh, the duration of mitosis in neonatal fibroblasts is not affected by uh, this uh, drug concentration. So using OMK57 agonists of MCAC activity at one micromolar, we found that the metaphase cells of elderly cells no longer exhibited overstable K fibers. And so we were rescuing the microtubule dynamics uh, in elderly cells. And we found that this OMK57 treatment was also able to reduce chromosomal instability. Uh, importantly, we found that, that by preventing uh, chromosomal instability, we could also decrease uh, the number of micronuclei that were uh, staining positive for uh, CGAS, a negative for uh, retinoblastoma, uh, which uh, is a signal that is very important to generate uh, the senescence phenotype. And in line with this, we also found that 2MK57 was able to delay the 
uh, to delay senescence because we found a reduced number of cells staining positive for uh, the senescent markers. When this agonist was used and published for the first time in cancer cell lines, the chromosomal instability was uh, um, rescued, but only transiently. Uh, so there was this issue whether uh, the treatment would uh, be able to be performed uh, in a long-term uh, scheme. So we uh, tested um, uh, to discard this uh, adaptive, uh, the adaptive resistance to a, a prolonged WMK57 uh, exposure in the H cells. Uh, we uh, measure uh, all the parameters of um, uh, being rescued by the treatment after 96 hours and after four weeks. And you can appreciate here, uh, I'm showing you the, the, the 96 hours treatment, but it was the same after one month. So you can still rescue uh, the K fiber intensity in the elderly cells after three days. You also see a rescue in the aneosomy index. Uh, the same for uh, the CGAS thing uh, positive uh, micronuclei and the same for uh, the percentage of cells with senescent markers. So we demonstrated that an adaptation that was observed before in cancer cells does not occur in our aging model uh, since upon long exposure to the drug there were benefits on mitotic duration, chromosome segregation, and senescent markers um, that um, were still being rescued. So, um, in conclusion, we disclose the first small molecule inhibition of seen that delays senescence. Uh, the disturbed kinetochore microtubule uh, dynamics uh, is a major driver of chromosomal instability in elderly cells, um, and this contributes to senescence. The H cells, they exhibit defective uh, kinetochore microtubule depolymerizing activity of uh, MCAG. Uh, and uh, this uh, compromises the error correction machinery. So uh, we uh, found that by overexpressing MCAC, uh, even though I did not uh, show this data, but also by treating with the MCAC agonist OMK57, we could rescue these overstable attachments, we could prevent an neuploid events, and we were also rescuing. Uh, the senescence, the accumulation of senescent cells, uh, which is mainly due to the activation of the CGAS thing pathway pro-inflammatory signaling. We are now addressing the impact of both FOXM1 genetic modulation and OMK57 pharmacological intervention uh, in other cellular aging hallmarks such as the epigenome, and the 3D chromatin uh, architecture, as well as we are investigating for the benefits in organismal aging. I hope very much to disclose these findings in uh, a near opportunity. So now I finish by acknowledging the funding agencies and members in the lab, particularly uh, Rui uh, Ribeiro, Joana Macedo, and Monica Village, uh, whose results were uh, described here today. Uh, I also like to acknowledge my collaborators, Dwayne Compton, uh, and lab members at the Geisel Medical School in the US, uh, and uh, for their, uh, their uh, collaboration on the OMK57 uh, compound work. Uh, and also uh, Floris Freuger uh, at Teriba, Netherlands, and René Medema at the NKI, Netherlands, uh, for uh, their uh, contribution in our FOXM1 uh, study. 
So under uh, the healthy uh, aging goal for the future, uh, we like to use this parallel uh, with our popular vintage Porto wine uh, that uh, has been improving for decades uh, in the bottle. Thank you so much for your attention and I'm pleased to take any questions.